You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310, and we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. AudibleTrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Friday. Hey, hey. Everybody's been working for the weekend. Here it is, 27th day of September, 2019. Thanks so much for joining us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we're just glad to have you right here, right now. I'm going to put up a chart of the S&P 500 E-mini futures. We'll talk about it in a moment, but if you can't see the chart, go to our homepage at CFRN.net. On the right hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions, you'll be registered in about 30 seconds, and that will give you one click access to the show going forward each and every day. On the days you're out of the office, away from your desktop, just grab any internet connected browser. It could be a phone, it could be a laptop. Maybe you're at the library using their computers. Point that browser to youtube.com slash CFRN slash live, and there you will find a live 
real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds, brought to you by the good folks at YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. Okay. Wow. What's that old saying, never sell a sleeping market? Or I guess if you sold the sleeping market in this case, it might have worked out well for you. In the live training room this morning, we had a daily double that we were looking for to just do a really simple thing. 2982 down to 2980. That's all the room we had to run, so there was no final target. But I did say in the room, I said, now, if by chance price screams through that weekly trading zone, then your final target, of course, once you take out that obstacle, and that obstacle would be the zone below 60 slash 61, and we made it down to 62 half. So to everyone who was able to uh, take advantage and participate in that, wow, this bell's for you. Good job. Okay. I, I, I hang on. Okay. All right. I'm going to do this because I got to, I got to do a thing. So I'm just going to shoot you straight over to Michael. Let me, let me give you the numbers real quick. We'll do that. And then I'm going to send you to Michael, get a recap of everything that happened in the live training room this morning. He'll do the recap and then I'll be done with what I got to do. Then I'll come back and we'll go over all the concierge trade alerts, logic 247 alerts. Uh, we'll talk to John, all that and answers to your questions, of course. All right, starting in the U.S. here, the Dow is currently up 11 and a half points. NASDAQ is down 35. S&P 500 down 5. Russell 2000 down 2 and a half. No movers, no shakers. In the commodity basket, crude oil down 23 cents, trading 56.18 last. Gold, oh, gold, <laughs> down $14.70, trading 1550 last that's a drop of just shy of one percent in the asian markets at the close today the nikkei posted a loss of 169 points shanghai gained three and the hang Seng dropped 87. again no movers no shakers and in the european markets at the close FTSE posted a gain of 75 points for the FTSE, that's a gain of 1%. The DAX added 92, and the CAC added 20. That gives us a mixed day in Asia, a green day in the UK, and thanks to the now, we at least have a mixed day here in the US of A. Let's go to Michael, get a recap of what happened this morning in the live training room, and then I'll be right back. We'll cover all the things I said earlier, talk to John, and of course, answers to your questions. Just put them in the chat box, and we're happy to answer them. All right, yeah, Michael, I see your screens. Right. Good. And okay. I'll just hit mute, and it's all yours. Okay, here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the 27th day of September, 2019. <sighs> If you have not taken a free trial with us and you want to take a free trial with us, go to the home page at cfrn.net and in the right hand column it says five day free trial apply.cfrn.net. Click on that. Once you click on that, you'll be brought to this page, eminitrainingschool.com. You can go directly to this page if you want to. And on this page, all we ask for is your name, your email, your phone number. And you can tell us the biggest trading challenge. So we can tailor one-on-one -on -one training specifically for you. Hit the send button, and then you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay. If you don't click the confirmation link, we don't know you we don't know that you took the free trial. So you gotta click that link. All right. All right. Now, results. Everybody wants results. If you're gonna read the spreadsheet, you gotta read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom today as I said, is the 27th day of September, 2019. Um, today made 18 ticks in the Euro, 
10 ticks in crude. We lost one tick in gold. That put us at plus 202.50 on the morning session. Today took 101 minutes and 15 trades. That's a lot to get to the goal for the day. Um, at that point, we're up 102.50, and we took a total of 16 trades. Okay, so on the month now, we're at 3,553. That's over 18 days, averaging 197 gross per day. If you had an $8 commission and you did everything exactly the same way I did, this would be your net. If you had a $5 commission and you did everything exactly the same way that I did, this would be your net. All right. Now we're coming up on the last day of the month, which is Monday. So, you know, and this I really, I really <laughs> blow it on Monday. Um, this is going to be our second best month of the year. Um, so anyway, on the year now, gross yearly total, $28,321. That's over 174 trading days, averaging 162 per day. Now, our mantra is that you don't want to try to make 10 points a day. You want to try to make two points a day or the equivalent of two points a day and just, you know, put 10 contracts on. But you got to work your way up there. you got to do it with profits. Okay. Okay. Now, I started all these charts out so I don't have to scroll backwards on you. Um, gold this morning, right in here, it wasn't trending. That's why I didn't do anything off the BBC. Um, then it finally broke this dynamic resistance and it had a momentum long trade right there that I missed. Had another momentum long trade here that I missed. That would have been break even. That probably would have too. Both been break even. Then we get into this one right over here. It looks like I missed this, but it might have been going into the high of the day. That's why it's not highlighted. Um, but I did get into this one here. And on this one, um, on this one, I stopped out pretty much to the tick. Then I got it back. Then I stopped out again, pretty much to the tick. So at that point, we're minus eight ticks. Um, then right in here, we picked up six ticks to put us at minus two, then one tick to put us at minus one. And that was where we ended on gold. And look at during the break, what it did here. This was just like a straight run up, a straight run up. Didn't give a pullback, no chance to enter. Um, you know, if you were doing the other trades that we have, somebody's got an open mic. I don't know. Uh, I think it's Dwayne, one of your mics is open. There you go. Um, is that muted or unmuted? Uh, I'll just mute you. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. You, you muted one and unmuted another one. So I'll just mute you. There you go. Oh, now you did it again. <laughs> okay. I'll mute, I'll mute Valerie too. Okay. So it's just me. And you guys can just turn your mics on when you want. Um, if you're doing the other trades, it was a 164 long right here that would have captured this because they can be counter trend. Okay. Would have captured that big move. Um, if you don't know what the other trades are, it's in the Telegram section. It says other trades, and it would have captured that move. But there was a long opportunity right here that would have given a few ticks, not too much. And then it tried changing directions, and you know. And this morning I was saying usually at 11:30, you know, well, Dwayne was saying usually at 11:30 the markets will open up, but on Fridays at 11:30, um, a lot of times it's just going to go sideways on gold and on the euro. But today it was just crazy, craziness. Um, there was a shorting opportunity right there for that leg down. There was, we had to get a trend going here. Um, yeah, a shorting opportunity right here would have been a break even. Then it flipped directions and nothing. Okay, so gold was pretty active today. Um, we ended up with minus one tick on it because we stopped out twice. Um, but it is what it is. The markets give what the markets want to give. Um, all right. This is the euro. Now, on the euro, there was a shorting opportunity right here that we missed because we're a couple minutes late this morning. Um, and there was a break even here. And then we picked up 18 ticks right there. Okay, to put us at plus 18 on the morning session. Um, during the break, it was a shorting opportunity there. And another one right there. 
Okay, that was the euro today. Now, crude oil. Now, we started out right here on crude. Got plus one tick on the first trade. Then we stopped out on the second trade. And we got a break even on the third trade. See that one there? That had a nice run, too. Um, then we stopped out again over here. At that point, we were at minus 15. Um, had a break even there, plus one there to put us at minus 14. Then we had a plus 14 right here to put us back to zero. Uh, we missed a long trade right here that would have been profitable. And right at the end of the session, we grabbed a short trade here for 10 ticks to put us at plus 10 on crude. Now, during the break, there was a shorting opportunity there and another one there. And then it did a direction change and gave a long opportunity there. And then it just chopped sideways. And that was crude. We ended up with plus 10 on crude today. After being down 15, we ended up with plus 10. Um, the ES, you know, I know it's moved around a lot today, but sadly it did not move around a lot during the morning session. Not enough anyway. Um, this is the whole morning session right here. <laughs> um, hang on, there's something that's next to me. All right. Uh, On the ES, um, it started out right here really choppy this morning, not giving us any opportunity at all. Then it got down to the zone, went through the zone, came back to the zone, got up above the zone, but the slingshot's not allowing any trades in here. Okay, then we get into the break here and something happened that pushed the ES all the way down here. Okay, and during the break, let's see, did we have any trade setups? It was one right here, um, a long right there. Mm -hmm. A short right there and there. And another short right here. And that was it for the ES this morning. No, I don't know what it was that Dwayne had to go do, but hopefully he's back now. But I'm going to get into this one more time. Give me two minutes, I'll be at my desk. Okay. All right, I am. Uh, I'm gonna go through how to do everything. And, okay. All right. Great. And so you should be have time. Um, Dwayne's using the phone app. There's a phone app you can use now. Um, nine twenty-seven. Today is the twenty-seventh day of September two thousand nineteen. Today we made eighteen ticks in the euro, ten ticks in crude oil, one tick in gold. Put us at plus two hundred two fifty on the morning session. Now. It took 101 minutes and 15 trades to get to the goal for the day. Now that's a gross number right there, the goal for the day. You know, because, you know, 15 times, well, whatever your commission is, is going to eat into that number. Obviously. It's going to eat into that number, I mean, obviously. But at the end of the day, the gross number is what we're looking at. And just being consistent is what we're looking at. And so we took a total of 16 trades. So on the month, the gross monthly profit is 3,553. And if you had an $8 commission and you did everything exactly the same that I did, your net would be 2,001. And with a $5 commission, your net would be 2,583. That is one contract, two hours per day. And I miss most of the trades, honestly, I do. Um, not most of them, but I miss a lot of them. Um, but over 18 days, we're averaging $197 per day. And on the year now, we're at $28,321. That's over 174 days, averaging 162 per day. 162 per day. Okay. And I, you know, at 11 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, we were still down. We were down 14 on crude. Um, and I think we were down two on gold. And we hadn't had anything on the euro. And then we had two trades just blow it out of the water. 
and bring us back. And then one last, one last little icing on the cake at the end of the session, the 10 tick crude trade. Um, all right, if you have not taken a free trial with us and you want to, go to the homepage at cfrn.net. In the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial, apply.cfrn.net. Click on that and you'll be brought to this page where it says eminitrainingschool.com. On this page, all we ask for is your name, your email, and your phone number, and you can tell us your biggest trading challenge so we can tailor one-on-one training specifically for you. When you do that, hit the send button. Once you hit the send button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click the confirmation link, then, well, we don't know that you took the free trial. Okay. Okay, and with that, hopefully Dwayne is back in his office now and can take it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Studio A, overlooking the South Mountain, America's largest city park. Um, and John B, I just sent you a link. It varies from market to market, Mark, and broker to broker, apparently. But you want to make sure you get Bert for your broker. But it's less than $8. Okay. Um, and that's all in fees and everything. Round trip. Okay. Uh, John B., I don't know if you're listening, but I just sent you the link to the meeting that we were going to have. Okay. And I got your questions from last night. So be ready to go. Ready to go. Um, all right. And now if Dwayne is ready, he can take it back. And John R. is not in here yet. So right now, Dwayne's not ready, obviously. <laughs> Or he would have taken it back. Mm. Oh, man. It's Friday. Good. Espanol. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, maybe. No, you can take it back. Um, the recap of the recap, I can give you that. Um, well, let me bring it back up. I didn't write it down today. Uh, today it took 101 minutes and 15 trades to get to 102.50. And that's because I had four stop outs today. Oh, let's talk about that. Uh, did they come right away, up front, spread out? Uh, no, they were pretty much right up front. And... I had two on crude. No, I, my first trade, I made one tick on crude. And then I had two stop outs on crude. And then I had a stop out on gold. So, okay, so after the one tick on crude and then two stop outs, so how far did that put you behind the eight ball? 15? I was minus, no. yeah, I was minus 15 on crude. Okay. And then I was, I was also minus eight on gold. Okay. And, and so I just kept applying the edge and... Well, I, I mean, obviously, obviously, once you got stopped out a few times like that, I mean, you you you, you change something, right? No, no, you don't change anything. You don't apply the edge. You, you, you the don't. Edge. You don't try some new filter or, or indicator mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. you call up a guru. I don't. I don't know. How does that work? No, no, you don't change a thing, and you know, you just keep applying the same edge over and over and over again. There are some days, and you know, when we talked about this in the partners meeting last night, there are some days where the markets, you know, I take every trade that I can. You don't have to, you know, I, I say you, meaning the audience doesn't exactly. have to, or right. our clients don't have to. And last night we were talking about things, times when you shouldn't. And today was one of those days. It started out just like everything I said last night in, in the partners meeting. And... And I mean, even in the partners meeting last night, everything was at the low of the day. And, you know, I was saying the correlation between the markets last night, the different markets that we have, you know, when, when they're not going in the same direction, you best just to stay out 
Mm-hmm. And and today was a perfect example of it. You know, we managed to get back, but it, you know, just applying the same edge over and over again. But you got to wait until the markets tell you it's okay. Oh, what are what are so? It's not what some guy said, some joker on the internet, or some crazy indicator or oscillator. I believe you just said that you've got to wait for the market to tell you it's okay. That is that is my opinion. Yes. I second that emotion. It's so important, guys. Um, you, in order to determine if anything, quote unquote, works or doesn't work. I'm not crazy about that terminology, but don't really have anything else to use. So, you you have to have a large enough sample size. I've seen this played out so many times over the years. Somebody will work really hard. Somebody who really understands, you know, basically they understand trading and, and, and all that, but they'll spend a lot of time and a lot of energy working on the perfect trade setup, you know, complemented with the perfect indicator and the perfect oscillator. And I mean, they really put a lot of time and energy and thought, even prayer into this thing. And then finally the day comes to roll it out, to unleash it on the trading world. And lo and behold, that first trade, and, and you may have been building up to this for weeks, even months, in some cases even longer. But the day's finally here. You can't avoid it anymore. You, you, you just, you, you've wrestled with your conscience and your conscience just won't let you put it off anymore. So you, you step out, you stick your head up out of that hole like a prairie dog would, and whoosh, it gets lopped off, which that's not a problem. That's the truth about trading. The problem is, is that's usually followed by these words. Oh, well, back to the drawing board. No, 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 not back to the drawing board. We know that there is a <clears throat> uneven, how does he say it about the distribution of wins and losses? How did Mark say that? Oh, gosh. There's an uneven, I'll say it the best I can remember. It. There's an unequal distribution of profitable and non-profitable trades when trading. And you never know if the next picture-perfect textbook setup, as you understand it, you, you have no way to know. It's unknowable whether or not that's going to turn into a profitable or an unprofitable trade. Now, and today, today yeah, was ahead. a perfect example. Mm -hmm. You know, at eleven o'clock today, I was down, I was down fourteen on crude, and I think I was, I think I was down one on gold, but I might have been down eight. And and I was thinking at the time, um, wow, what just happened to my gold chart? Well, it I just was, it vanished. It did. I was thinking at the time that you know we're really going to have to get some movement here. Um, for this to uh, get my gold chart back up there, um, here it is. Um, I was thinking at the time that we're really going to have to get some movement, you know, to get positive on the day. And you know, earlier in the day, I was, I was just counting the number of days since I've had a red day. Mm -hmm. And you know, how long it had was it been? Forty days. It was forty days up until today. Wow, that's and, great. So today's 40, 41 days, but I was thinking I jinxed myself this morning. I'm not going to wood again right, right now. Right. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's it was back in July. It was the last time I had a red day, and you know I'm just applying the same principles, the same method, the same everything every single day. And you know I had a blue day, which means I did get the gold for the day, but I gave it all back. So. But it wasn't, you know, I did get the goal for the day. That's the key is that I got the goal for the day every day. That's right. Now, Michael is required because we've made a commitment uh, to our clients that each day from 930 to 1130 a.m. Eastern, we will put on and take off trades based upon our methodology and strategy. We never do anything different. It's the same thing. We haven't changed the line of code or a rule in over, I don't know, six years, seven? What, I don't know how long it's been exactly. And about seven, I think now, just yeah. about seven. 
The first time we the first time we did a spreadsheet, I think, was in October of well, seven years ago. <laughs> Do you remember when we first published the concierge trade? I mean, I know we did three years of uh, public beta uh, in Twitter, but do you remember when we officially rolled out the concierge? I was trying to remember the other day. I'm thinking it's got to be six least, years at least. Yeah, I think it's 2013, 2014, something like that. Uh, I think there's a link somewhere. Here, I'll just find it the easy way. CFRN. Concierge trade alerts. Okay. Concierge trade alert service. Well, I published this page. I'll drag it up and show it. Oh, let me take the charts. Yeah, you can take the charts. And that reminds me, I gotta go. You gotta go? Okay. No, I, I gotta schedule next week's meeting. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, okay, so I got the charts now. I published this page. It should have a date, I would think. Uh, register for a concierge trade alert service. I do have a meeting. Mm, there is. I guess there isn't a date. Meeting in a phone call. Well, I can tell you this. It was back when uh, the S&P, or no, gold was at 1100. Oh, right there. Okay, well, these are these are actually pretty fresh, these examples. So that's January of 2017. So that part's coming up on three years, and we did a three-year public beta. So I guess I was right, somewhere around six years that we've been doing those. Mm -hmm. And I've not, changed a, uh, I've not changed the way I arrive at the concierge trade alerts, nor have I changed the way we execute and manage them. Uh, it's... And, and, and for some of you, if you're new to trading, that might not seem that significant. But for those of you who have been part of other trading and trading organizations, uh, every, almost every week, there's some new revelation, uh, you know, some new indicator, some, something different. And that just shows you the weakness of the methodology itself. Because... The markets have been doing the exact same thing, things, since the inception of the markets. When you hear us talk about how markets work, markets have worked the same way. So if the markets don't change how they work, why would a methodology or strategy need to change? Now, some would say, well, yeah, but, you know, there's different kinds of days. There's up days and there's down days and there's sideways days. Right, exactly. See, I, I guess really where what we do kind of differs from what other folks are doing. And I'm not knocking anybody else's stuff. I'm just pointing out the difference. What we do, well, I said this, I think, on a video the other day. Everything works some of the time. Nothing works all the time except the market the market works every single day whether it's an up day a down day a sideways day the market always works so it's just logical reasoning that if you can learn to do what the market does then yes you'll have up days down days sideways days days that are profitable perhaps days not profitable of course but in the grand scheme of things, there's nothing to change. In order for our, at this point, in our evolution, uh, in order for us to change something, it would require that the underlying principle in which, upon which markets operate, that would have to change. And then we would mirror that. So if you except the fact that markets do work and the market's always right and then if you can accept that price is always trying to get to a weekly trading zone from sunday evening at 6 p.m eastern to friday afternoon at 5 p.m eastern price is always trying to get to a zone this morning in the live training room 
Let me put the indicator on so everybody can see exactly what we were looking at this morning. Uh, okay. This is the 11 to 11.30 candle. And I think I got the daily double out today about, uh, about 11.15. So this candle was building right here. Now, I mentioned that this red and falling CFMA1, we talked about this in the workshop last night, and then I also talked about it, I think, in the Telegram channel last night, that its price, even though it gets above the BBC, which leads us to expect higher prices, we have to evaluate the, ob the obstacles that are in the path of price getting from here above the BBC all the way up to here, which is the weekly trading zone. So the first obstacle that we ran into was the red and falling CFMA1. That will always act as good resistance until it doesn't. Now, and so it held, it took us below the BBC, it took us below the weekly trading zone. And <clears throat> let me just back this up a second. This is what we were looking at last night during the workshop. See, the workshop starts at 9 p.m. Eastern, so that's going to be 2,100 hours on this chart. Twenty one hundred hours. Uh, no, I, something doesn't feel right there. Uh, let's see, 9 o'clock. That is 2,100 hours. Oh, yeah, because we were talking about a pullback okay as price was down here I, I told the guys uh, everybody that's in the workshop we discussed this I said now we could just get short here if if we wanted to but my preference is to wait for a pullback to the BBC if it holds then we'll you know look to trade that short down to the zone below if it doesn't hold well, in order for it to not hold, price has to get above the BBC, and then it has to get above the weekly trading zone. And then I highlighted these areas where the market would potentially run into an obstacle, and then the market would have to overcome said obstacle in order to continue higher. So I drew this line. That's the first obstacle. And look what happened when price got to that obstacle. Pulled back, okay, regathered, gathered its strength, its ability to move, and then it took us to this obstacle where price again pulled back a little bit, powered on through it. But this third and final obstacle that I had highlighted on the chart, it didn't have the enough of the long stuff there there were more at this point there were more all the way up there were more buyers than sellers in the order flow except at this obstacle there were more sellers buyers stepped in ran it up sellers took the ball pushed it down buyers stepped in ran it up but this is as far as they could go right into that obstacle that we knew was there that it could impede the flow prevent price from getting so each obstacle you've got to overcome it overcome it couldn't overcome it and then what we also talked about because we were already below the BBC and already below the zone when we were talking about it last night in the workshop I drew these lines here that's the first obstacle on the way down that's the second obstacle on the way down and I said if we can get below both of those obstacles then we have a pretty clear shot at price getting all the way down to the zone and so this is how that played out this first obstacle we just blew right through it like it wasn't even there second obstacle we blew through it like it wasn't even there and this morning in the in the uh in the, in the uh, live training room, when I put out the daily double, I explained there's no final target. I'm not publishing a final target on the daily double today, just the initial target, because with an entry at 2982, 
we only had two points room to run before we would find what we anticipate to be good support, the zone. And I did add, I said, the only thing that would change that, of course, is if price rips through that zone like it's not even there, then we've got to take out this obstacle and this obstacle to get down. And so we're still trying. Price is still trying to get to the weekly zone below. Here, price is above the zone, above the BBC. We can clearly see and say price is trying to get to the zone overhead. Now, just because the market's trying to do something doesn't mean it's always going to accomplish it. But as long as you know what it's trying to do, you can participate. What you don't want to do is if you're going to participate long, you don't want to do it there. You don't want to do it there. And you certainly don't want to do it there. Instead, you want to do it there. There. And uh, then you don't. Then you don't want to do anything. Worst case, if you were up here, is you got long uh, as we're touching the BB or the CFMA1 here, blue and climbing. And it that candle had a low of uh, 88.75, a high of 91. There's actually three points in there, it looks like, in that little candle. But you see how price walks sideways. We get below the CFMA1. Now it's red and falling. And then once price gets below that BBC, it's time to start thinking about going short, except for the fact we got a major obstacle right below us, support. So if you're getting short, you got to recognize that this is where the market may find support. It did. Yes, it spiked it, but look where the body of that candle is. It's just right smack dab inside of that weekly zone. So we go up to where we expect to find good resistance until it until we don't. And then it's just it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, except I wasn't prophesying, I wasn't forecasting, I was just pointing out that based upon the methodology and strategy that Michael I and I have put together, when you learn to see the market the way I just explained to you that we see it, that will lead to you starting to think the way we think about markets. And that will ultimately lead you to taking action the same way that we would. Remember, <coughs> our goal here is not to just daze you and amaze you with our ability to trade or to give you awesome trade alerts. That's part of it, I guess. But the, the true part is that we want you to learn how to do what I just said. See the market the way we see it. Think about it the way we think about it. And then do exactly what we would do. And some people might go, well, wait a minute, how am I supposed to know what you would do? Well, by applying logic. And I'm not speaking of the alert service when I say logic there. It's, it's just logical. I mean, that's how the name came. Because as I was sitting here one night and I was working on developing the alert service, the, the logic alert service, and I knew I had to give it a name. It just, it just came to me, well, what you're doing, Dwayne, is you're applying logic. Because you know that certain things are going to happen. You know that when price encounters a zone from above, it's going to be good support till it isn't. And when price approaches a zone from below, you know it's going to be good resistance until it isn't. And so it was in applying just the next logical step. See, we're coming down. I mean, hopefully, I mean, this is just so crystal clear. Hopefully everyone can see the market is desperately trying to get to this zone below. Got real close. So why did it turn here? Okay before getting to the zone. Well, buyers came in over here and had a pretty good run. Leg, retrace, leg. So if that was a bargain here, then buyers are going to see it as a bargain here. And so they came in at support, pushed it back up. 
But the sellers are obviously more committed to their positions than the buyers are. There's more sell orders than buy orders in the order flow. And remember, order flow is the only thing that has the ability to turn a market. If somebody tries to tell you that their indicator or their oscillator or any other thing turned price, and, 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 and I don't want you to fall into that trap, it might be easy to say, okay, well, every time price pulls back to the BBC from above, I know it's going to turn the market up higher. Uh-uh. No. The BBC doesn't have the power to turn the market, only order flow. What the BBC does is it shows you where the high probability spot is for the market to turn if, at that price, buyers overwhelm sellers and vice versa on the short side. So, it, you know, to borrow a phrase from Spock, it's all very logical. Isn't that what Spock said about, didn't he say that? Didn't he have some kind of little catchphrase about being logical? Logic. All right. I think Michael's on the phone. Okay. All right. Let's do this thing. Oh, gee. I just got a distressing text message, but it's not as distressing as the one yesterday. So, for those of you that were not tuned in yesterday, uh, our good friend, friend of CFRN, personal friend, uh, Mike Reed, trade stalker. Uh, he was on the show last week to publicly announce his retirement. I couldn't help but think last <coughs> night, how many times over the course of your life have you heard it said that someone, you know, they worked hard all their life and when they retired, they, they, they pass shortly after after retiring. I'm not saying that's you know what happened here with Mike. John, I don't know if you were still tuned in yesterday, but yeah, uh, no, no, I, our, I, uh, I, I listen. You, uh, you, you know, in my cruise ship days, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of captains that retired uh, died pretty pretty soon afterwards. Uh, yeah, that was such a shock yesterday. I got the text message uh, while I was on the on the radio. I just I ended the. The broadcast Sorry, what, was the, what was the shock that you got? Uh, Mike Reed, uh, Mike Reed, the trade stalker, he passed away yesterday. Oh my God! He, he, was, how, just on, he, he was just on how the show last week. Uh, oh. Well, well, Mike's uh, Mike's a quadriplegic. Uh, he got oh. drafted as a young man to play professional baseball, and he was out celebrating with his friends. I guess he was probably eighteen at the time. They went out to celebrate. I mean, that's a big deal. You get drafted to the majors. And uh, they went cliff diving, and he had oh, an unfortunate, about yeah, he had an unfortunate yeah, accident, yeah. broke his back. So he's been in that chair uh, all these years. I learned so much. From, he, I, I posted this yesterday. Uh, Mike Reed taught me so much from that wheelchair, and he helped me with my trading. That guy's a real hero to me because, you know, some mornings I get up, I stub my toe, and I, I just want to go back to bed. Ah, it's going to be a horrible day. This guy, he had to overcome so many obstacles just to go to work in the morning, you know, just yeah. to get to his desk and and to get his charts open. What an incredible! He he typed with a with a pencil between his teeth. I mean, you, you know, when we take so much for granted, and 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 a lot of people, you know, don't want to work. And, and the, he he considered it an honor and a privilege that God had provided him with a way that he could support, despite what happened to him, he was able to support himself. Uh, he got married, uh, it's probably been five, six, seven years ago. This woman already had a very nice lady, Julie. Uh, she was so good to him and she had three, four kids. Michael took them in and, and just raised them just like they were his own kids. I mean, God, the, the world's gonna miss him. So we, we own tradestalker.com now. We took over the site because I knew Mike was retiring and, and I just wanted to keep it open as a legacy. And we're gonna create a Facebook page, guys. So any of you that knew Mike, worked with Mike, you can go to that Facebook page and just type in your thoughts. And then sometime next week or the week following, we'll have an online memorial service 
because he's got clients uh, around the world that have been clients of his, some as many as 20 years. So we're going to invite everybody to come and participate in that broadcast that day and take turns taking the mic and just sharing, you know, their memories of Mike and how he helped them. I, I know he was just an incredibly fundamental piece of the puzzle for me in learning how to trade these markets. And he was also, uh, he was also an example uh, to me of a life well lived, overcoming adversity, not letting it hold him back, but setting his sights on something and, and moving forward. And I, I learned so much from him. Plus he helped me with my trading. So, yeah. all right. Well, that's the deal. Uh, all right, John, where, what you want to look at first? Well, <clears throat> the market's heading down. It's uh, the market's in a lot of trouble. Uh, and um, I agree. <clears throat> the, the, you know, it's acting heavy. Um, it's uh, a sort of a death of a, count, a thousand cuts at the moment that is likely to, you know, if you remember, we talked about Tuesday, we got a reprieve on Wednesday. And then we down, the fact that we went down yesterday was uh, not good. And, and you know, the, the head and shoulders bottom you talked about yesterday is it looks like it's going to be taken out here and that we're going to have a bad weekly, a down week, a down month. Um, it just doesn't look very good. Uh, so um, the uh, uh, certainly a down week here. And, you know, coming into Monday, uh, the, I don't know if you just got the news, but uh, this is a news flash for everybody. They haven't heard it yet. There's uh, White House is looking into either suspending trading in Chinese stocks or delisting them. And um, I think the implications of that are, that, you know, they're really putting a, a fire under the Chinese. Uh, so I, I think the reasoning behind that, there was some sort of a deal where there was some sort of a takeover that basically blew up because of Chinese dishonesty or something and uh, alleged at least. And um, that's maybe partly to do with what's going on here. So this this is a, I mean, uh, Baidu and, um, and uh, Baba are, are already plunging and the whole Chinese sector is plunging. The, the overseas markets are plunging. So everything is looking pretty grim, frankly. Um, they're not, I mean, look, they're well off the lows, so it's not the end of the world, but, you know, the, the, the lows of August. Um, but uh, certainly today they're, they're making new lows already, almost for sure going to drag the S&P down and everything else. Uh, so, you know, FXI is down dramatically. Hang on a second. So we're still battling with that on the, on the daily chart of the S&P. We're still battling with that 24% Fibonacci retracement, which is also, guys, this is real important. Take a look, everyone, right here where we got this bearish cross on the daily chart. I pointed it out a couple of days ago. I said when price gets back to that area, that's an area for good support. And so we caught good support, one, two, three sessions. Looks like we may take it out, all right? If we take out uh, this swing low, then the next stop, FIB-wise, is going to be the 38% FIB down at 29.32. Go ahead. Yeah, Mike. I think this, uh, you know, the impeachment thing is a, is actually a pretty big deal. And it's hard for stocks to be rallying against this kind of news at the moment. Secondly, the, I mean, the fact that the stocks have held up this well is, is actually remarkable. Um, <clears throat> the... Other thing is, look, what I, I think the reason why the Democrats are freaking out and look, this, uh, this thing holds, how, this much whole trouble thing is is, how much trouble is he in, John? I mean, seriously. You well, think... I, you know, I, then, I don't really think he's in that much trouble, actually, because okay. it's going to come out sooner or later that this is a real stitch job. You know, that the, I mean, they've had this, this has been created by a, a, some hotshot legal firm. The, the, the whistler, you know, there is no there is no whistler, really. It's some agitator at the CIA who's behind this, apparently. And it's a political thing. So, you know, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a, no, there, there was an article on Yahoo a few days ago, which I was kind of shocked to read. And I sort of said, hey, you know, how could the market go up? Well, if Trump resigned or if he gets impeached, you know, the market could go up. I don't buy that for a minute. Not but, for a uh, minute. It'll collapse. <laughs> it'll, it'll absolutely collapse. <laughs> right. And uh, the, um, you know, there was, and, and they were saying, 
all this and that, but it was a kind of a crazy article. But the, uh, the, the you know, there is a lot of risk in this because, you know, in 1974, when, uh, when this happened with Nixon, uh, you know, that was when the markets crashed. Uh, you know, the UK market went down 90%. Uh, and the U the U.S. market was cut in half, cut in half. So it's uh, it's certainly a big deal, and it it certainly makes our twenty one and our twenty twenty one scenario uh, much more uh, risky and something you need to be. You know, you know, I've got a friend who's pretty keen on a stock called ZNGA at the moment, and I did a little bit of work on it, and um, he made some money out of it, but I don't want to get out. And it, it's actually on its lows now since the last like week or so. Z, did you say uh, Z E N G A? Z E N G A. It's some sort of a gaming stock. But you know, mm -hmm. this, it's it's trading at a hundred times earnings. You know, do you really want to buy a stock at a hundred times earnings? I don't think so. No. Not for me. No. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> and and look All at right. the way it's gone down the last okay, couple of days. That's a daily chart. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are these? So, that name sounds from. Is that a gaming company? It is. Yeah. Uh, oh, you yeah. just said that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, and and look, it's actually not making much money. The margins are razor thin. It's got big revenues, but the it's really not going anywhere. It's I think it's incredibly overvalued myself. But uh, you know, he read it because he's, somebody said it was going to go up to eight or nine dollars, and usually that's you know by the time it's out in the press, it's uh, it's too late to buy. You know. <clears throat> so uh, look who that is. Uh, okay, so they got a Game of Thrones uh, featured games. So they got Game of Thrones. They've got uh, Words with Friends. Now, my wife plays that uh, daily. She, there's people, she got people all over the world. She doesn't know them, never had a conversation with them. But each day they, they play this game. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Well, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, that's why the stock's where it is. I mean, it's got a so, uh, million dollars in revenues. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty hefty but uh, it doesn't doesn't look like they're making that much you know to the mm -hmm. bottom line so uh, <clears throat> anyhow uh, the the market is to, it looks pretty risky to me at the moment and by the way the the, the, the VIX TV well, I, I just called a few guys told them to get into the uh, nugget and JNUG I think the gold is reversing higher here now and the lows may be actually in on the gold I think this is a very good bottom in the gold stocks, and we might actually see a, a very big up move in gold here. Uh, I think this news is only just here's a nugget. <clears throat> no, uh, in UGT. UGT. In UGT. Yeah. UGT. There you go. Okay. So see, your, see, your, your, your suggestion I, it, was to it consider gaps lower. It gapped lower, but. Uh, it looks to me like it's going to gap higher next week. I think it's going to gap higher, uh, and I'll probably leave an island bottom, and it could uh, could really motor out of here. So I'm I'm willing to take a shot at it today, and it's actually moving up as as we speak, and the gold's gold's taking off, and the VIXs VIXs are taking off. So I I think this China thing is really, I mean we we actually might have a, a crash, you know, a mini crash, uh, eighty seven type crash, if if this because it looks like we're going to have a very bad down day now, and um, and uh, probably, you know, maybe we make a bottom next Tuesday, possibly. So uh, we'll see. Uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday. Wednesday is my bottom day, <clears throat> but sometime next week, you know, we might we might see some sort of a bottom. So. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's just look at gold real quick. GCG, uh, GC. Uh, let's just look at gold. All right, there's, there's just gold. Uh, See what I mean about the reversal there? It looks pretty... Uh, that looks nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. we could close even where we are, I'd rather see this thing close with even just a tiny green body. Yeah, that would, would be, be, that would would be, be very yeah. bullish. Uh, I would like that quite a bit. But even if we closed right here, uh, I still think that's bullish for Sunday night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it could really roar from here. This gold could it could it could go up dramatically. You know? How are we looking on silver? <clears throat> Probably a bit better today, actually. So let's take a peek. Okay, not quite as bullish, but uh, yeah. we're holding support here, and so that's yeah. good. Uh, and by the, and by the, by the palladium just hit a new high of sixteen sixty two today. 
It's that. pulled back about 10 bucks, but it's uh, continuing to rally very strongly. There's <laughs> Palladium. Wow, that look, now that looks very bullish. Yeah, it actually looks like it's going to go parabolic here, you know, because when you see that kind of upward curve, usually they tend to accelerate higher. <clears throat> so, are, are we talking all time historic high here? We sure are. Yeah, okay. yeah, all right. Yeah. And the uh, platinum, it's probably worth having a look at the platinum just okay. to see. Uh, it's not setting the world on fire just yet, but it could join into the, to the uptrend. There's actually platinum. looks all right, you know, it, I think uh, if the platinum holds here it, and it's up next week, it, it could actually join the, join the, it was in advance and everything and potentially move a lot higher. So yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to see a close here uh, above like 950, even, yeah. even 945, 945 up to, you know, 960. Uh, that, yeah. that, that, that look, that's very tradable right there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it could be one down spike on this still, you know, could can't rule out come back nine ten or so that that would be a gift i think if that happened and then and after that it could be a real big run but uh, any way you look at it it looks like it's set to go, to go higher i made higher. these chart annotations <laughs> on a day i clearly remember when you said you thought platinum was headed for a thousand bucks and right thanks we got up to the swing high there was nine ninety seven fifty five good call yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. <clears throat> so, uh, How beans the grains, grains, well, uh, yeah. grains are suffering today, obviously, with the Chinese thing going on. And um, uh, the oil is a bit, well, oil is actually was up a bit earlier on. It's, it's coming back again now. So, um, uh, you and know, soy this beans uh, <clears throat> on, a, on a daily chart. Oh yeah, the, going back to the Trump thing about that article that was written, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of reminded me of kind of Julius Caesar, uh, you know, that if the if the if the Republicans did turn on Trump and sort of did him in, you know, you can never rule that out. But um, uh, it uh, uh, that would be that would be sort of a kind of a, kind of a, a real uh, curveball, if you like. That we might have to deal with so no, i just saw some art some headline uh let me i think i got it right here uh let's see what it says <laughs> u.s weights limits to investment in china it was a, it was a china related headline that i saw hang on white house come on just waiting for my page to repopulate White House deliberates block on all U.S. investments in China. And is, is that what you're referring to, John? That's the one, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, how do they do that? How, what's the mechanics for, for actually implementing something like that? I don't know. This is, this is never, this is uncharted territory, you know, so you have to... Discussion is in its preliminary stages <laughs> and nothing has been decided, according to CNBC's source. Uh, there's also no time frame for the implementation Restricting investments in Chinese entities would be meant to protect U.S. investors from excessive risk due to lack of regulatory supervision. Yeah, that's what uh, this issue that came up was something to do with sea trip and a takeover, you know. Guys, don't, don't forget, these are, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. Uh, and then, now, this doesn't pertain to every Chinese citizen, but as a government as an ideology they're evil pure evil they imprison people for no reason you know i know a lot of people here in america don't have you know high thoughts about muslims and whatnot but but we're not locking them up in concentration camps are we no heck we're electing them to congress that's pretty stupid too but i mean these people you know they may meet with the president and they may smile and shake hands and, and break bread together. But trust me, if they had a way to put you in one of those camps, you'd be there already. If it weren't for a president with a backbone who's rebuilding America's military to once again be the greatest military superpower in the world, if it weren't for him. You know, I used to joke back in... When we first started doing radio together, 
I, I used to make this show, hey, all the, all the wealthy smart folks are sending their kids to schools where they can learn Mandarin as a second language because someday it might be our first language. It's not such a joke anymore. It's not so funny anymore because they would like nothing better. Global domination. Why can't we just all get along? I, I, that's rhetorical because we haven't been able to since since the garden. But anyway, go ahead, John. So, well, <clears throat> uh, looking at the beans there, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of pressure, selling pressure. You know, when I, uh, in spite of what's happening today, I just, as you know, it would be worthwhile being very alert because if this thing doesn't go ahead with China, you know, those Chinese stocks will rebound with a vengeance and uh, and the market will probably do the same. So Speaking of, John, let's look at a couple of Chinese stocks and see if it's having any impact. Uh, what would be a good one? Baidu, perhaps? Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, BIDU. Okay. All right, that's, well, that's daily. Okay. Looks pretty, so, pretty bad. It does. Right. It does. Uh, what's Baba, the other one? Baba. Is Baba. Yeah, Baba. <coughs> Ooh, it doesn't look so hot either. Yeah, it's got, um, but it's C C T R P. Okay. C T R P. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, and just put yin up. Yeah, Y I N N. Okay. Ooh, man, that other's yeah. looking good. Yeah, and then Yang is the opposite of that. That's the bullish case. Okay, so. <laughs> that's that's clever. Yin and Yang. There we go. All right. No. The, sorry, it's the bearish. Yeah, this is the bearish side. This is it's so bullish yeah. today. Right, bullish right, today. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, it's yeah, bullish, guys, the, because uh, it's a bearish uh, ETF. Yeah. Yeah. What about the, take a look at the RU, RUSL, Russian, Russian market. RUSL. <coughs> okay. Kind of, now, this is a <laughs> bullish <laughs> ETF, guys. So going down means what you would think it means. The yeah. previous one is a bearish ETF. So when it's going up, that means the market's actually going down. So. I mean, look at look at the. It's interesting because you see the island bottom very clear on this particular Russian chart. Um, so look, if this is all a storm in a teacup and the market reverses next week, then it's very it could turn very bullish. That's what I was kind of forewarning you to be alert to. Also, uh, put up the EEM uh, if you would, uh, Dwayne, please. Thanks. EEM. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, if you could go squeeze that up to like. Two decades, if you can. Want to go weekly? Uh, yeah, probably. All right. Okay. Here's yeah, you know, <clears throat> it was looking. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> it's it's still, you know, this is a picture of look look at the the first decade, right? When all the emerging markets performed extremely well because of the dollar. Um, the, I think the I think we're within a, a month of a big turn in the dollar. I was talking to uh, somebody in the know last night, and <clears throat> the now this here's the chart, dollar right here. Uh, that's that's weekly on the dollar. Right, and you know, notice uh, in spite of the strength here in the last few days, it's not hitting new highs yet. Um, <clears throat> uh, the the it's just up right there, but I think. Look, uh, here's here's what I'm kind of expecting. Uh, it, it looks pretty inevitable the UK is going to leave the U, the EU by Halloween. Okay. Um, there's a possibility by the 17th of October they might have a a deal Brexit, not a no deal. You know, they might mm -hmm. have reached some kind of an exit thing. Okay. So <clears throat> I think if they get a deal exit, the pound could jump to 130 or higher. Uh, pretty quick. I, I just saw a headline. The, White House considers deleting U.S. companies from our stock exchanges. You mean Ch U.S. or Chinese? Well, I'm sorry. The, the U.S. is going is, is considering deleting 
White House considering deleting Chinese stocks from U.S. Yeah, exchanges. Stock, yes. Right, okay. Right. right. Okay. Right. Thanks. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's yeah, serious. That's, that I mean, that's you're right. This is uncharted territory. Yeah. So, but it it feels like uh, you know there we could be getting to a crescendo here with the dollar. There's still a chance it could spike one. You know, now next month maybe. But <clears throat> and in fact, if you look at that previous little spike just before it went down through a hundred. That's where it might the selling might come from. So it gets up to about, about this, this and, yeah, right here. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that, that one, that one there. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> but I think the pressure of Brexit, uh, once the exit is made, you know, if Trump surprises and announces on November the first a trade deal with the UK, that could be very, very bullish for the pound, and. Um, uh, it, you know, because I think the, you know, making a deal with the U.S. is probably as big as making it with the U with the European Union. And if they get some sort of a, a deal Brexit as well done, plus the EU then does a deal, a trade deal with the U.S., I think the combination of all that could be very bullish for the European currencies. And that would be bullish for gold. <clears throat> So there's the pound on it's something to keep an eye on for the yeah so you know and and you know we might go back down into the you know in the next month still to the uh to the uh conclusion of this brexit thing and possibly make a double bottom down there 120 or you know but uh mm, okay look, uh, look back you know, here this goes back to 17 2017 Right. And then this and, could and be the beginning of a move. Yeah, this really could be yeah. a beginning of a move higher. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I think that it's uh, pretty interesting what's what's happening here. Now, you just mentioned and, crude a second ago, but we didn't go to the chart, John. Oil falls after Iran claims U.S. offered to remove sanctions, but Trump denies that. I hmm. wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't rule... I, I think some sort of a gesture towards Iran mm -hmm. <clears throat> of some sort to to get them to the table. They're kind of resigned to come. They're talking about talks now, and um, they could even be talks going on behind the scenes you don't even know about. <clears throat> so um, that's I that's true. Be, Very true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that um, things might be you know because look they were pretty chummy with the. Boris Johnson and Emmanuel Macron uh, in that picture that you know they were asking for a meeting with Trump so who knows what, what came kind of, out a of it, what kind of a grade do you give him on his report card so far I mean I know it's early on but who Boris, Boris uh -huh. I think he's doing great okay I think he's doing great uh, you know he's uh, he's out there every day doing you know pushing the agenda and I think if, if look he, he didn't I didn't I don't think he wanted the news to come out that he had backdoor talks going on with the European Union but somehow that came out uh, that you know and that, that, you know, I think that kind of shocked everybody because nobody you know the European Union was supposedly not interested in any kind of deal Brexit mm -hmm. deal mm -hmm. but now it appears they are so the op the possibility of a Brexit deal is is I think pretty pretty uh, pretty likely, and if they I mean think about this you got to remember the pound was 150, 160 you know when when it was like when it was thought that UK was going to stay in Europe it's lost third of its value since the since all this has been going on so in terms I believe that uh, the the best arrangement they can possibly have. To, is to maintain the custom, what they call the customs links. You know, in other words, free trade with Europe, but not free. You know, with with but with without the sovereignty sovereignty issues. You know, so they kind of get the sovereignty back. They're not run by Brussels anymore, but we still have the free trade with Europe. Uh, that's actually better than being in Europe in some respects. Certainly, from a Brit standpoint, right. So, to so the uh, average person, the, the the man in the street, what's their, what what are they, what do the people want? Yeah, 
you, you know, I think everybody's worn out over it, but uh, it's still about 50 50. You know, okay. I mean, 90% of the city of London wants to stay in Europe, uh, Northern Ireland wants to stay in Europe. Scotland wants to stay in Europe, and, and Wales, I think, is kind of leaning So, so I, I understand most of the, of the benefits of being part of this European Union, and we talked about it, just one, and it's, it's huge, is the ability to just travel freely. You know, yeah. like, you're going from, yeah. like you're going from Idaho to, you know, to Louisiana or something. It, you, just, you just get in the car and go. Uh, yeah, when we were in I, Amsterdam, I, my wife and I, no, no, we took a... That, but to work, work and live and uh, the whole thing, you know, no, no papers or anything. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a great thing. Mm -hmm, but, right. um, you know, as a, as a European passport holder, you can, you can uh, uh, live and work anywhere in Europe, basically. Uh, now that's all going to, well, that, it's, it, it may change. It, it's, it's probably going to change. Uh, although the, the UK is already kind of guaranteeing you know, if, if you've been living in the UK as a European for, you, you know, you're going to be able to continue. So I think that's probably going to be the same. I, I, I really think it's at the end of the day that that's probably going to stay in place in in some form. But they, the Brits obviously want to control immigration to a much higher degree. So that's the issue. When my wife and I were in Amsterdam back in, I guess it was 2004, <clears throat> We got one. We had a rental car. We were there for a week, and uh, one day we decided to just go to Germany for lunch. <laughs> we just got in the car and drove to Germany. You know, it was about an, from where we were at. Maybe it was an hour, hour and a half, two hour drive to some nice little Bavarian type of village. You know, and uh, had a nice lunch and get back in the car and then drove back to Amsterdam. I don't recall us even having to go through like a checkpoint or anything. No, no, there's nothing there. It's wide open all the way. And, and you know, Ireland is one of the big issues because they don't want to have a border between, I think I remember telling you on the show before that in the old, you know, like probably 30 years ago, 35, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. you, you drive down from Northern Ireland to, uh, to the Republic, you, you knew you were in the Republic because Things were not so good back then, right? Right. You know? uh, nowadays, it's, it's the other way around. The Republic is the, the rich neighbor, if you like, and Northern Ireland is the is the lesser, uh, to some extent. So, so all but, this unrest that went on in Ireland uh, for so long was that was that really based on was that a religious thing? Yeah. It, look, it's still there's still uh, you know there's still a history of it, and there's still tension. You know, a little. I mean, it's greatly reduced and one of the great things that have happened is because of the prosperity i mean really ireland even as a whole including northern ireland is you know arguably the fourth or fifth richest country in the world today what's not to like you know well, you know when, 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 when most people when, when most people have a little jingle in their pocket you just tend to get along better right yeah it yeah, kind of puts yeah. you in a better mood i mean yeah. well the thing is there was the problem was there was a lot of your you know uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, there was bureaucracy. Was that the word you're looking for? No, not bureaucracy. Um, you know, uh, people didn't want to hire Catholics to work and Protestants, uh, and the Protestants okay. with the wealthiers okay. and that sort of thing. Discrimination and all that sort of thing was going on in a big way. But I think it's virtually, you know, almost, almost eradicated. Today. It's just so crazy. People have been trying to kill one another since time began in the name of the prince of peace we're killing each other mm -hmm. <laughs> and i mean there was a lot of uh, you know you've seen ryan's daughter you know there was a lot of um res resentment about the uk in the past being a kind of an emperor over ireland and all this you know because let's face it, Ireland got independent in 1916, and unfortunately for Ireland, you know, the North remained in the UK, and that was really the whole issue. You know, not the United Ireland is 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 kind of a you know still a dream of, of a lot of people in Ireland. Uh, I mean, they pretty much have a United Ireland today. Really, uh, it's probably more united today than it's ever been, and that's a good thing. But um, you know. It's amazing. I mean, when I think really when the Queen went, I honest to God, I never thought I'd see the day the Queen went to Ireland, uh, knowing knowing how how you know having yeah. lived there and understood mm -hmm. the whole thing. But that that really broke the ice, and you know the President of Ireland getting a state visit, uh, 
to Buckingham Palace. That was a memorable thing. And uh, ever since then, I mean, you know, Prince Harry going to Ireland with Megan and Charles going to Ireland. He's even been in Kinsale, been right in front of our house. Wow. <laughs> so nice uh, it, it's, yeah, right. And um, so, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's, and, 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 you know, you got guys like, uh, you know, the, the fellow who does, I forget his name now, he does a, a, sh a show, a night show, an evening talk show over in, in England. He's probably the number one talk show guy. Um, he he was in the same school as me, so uh, in band in Ireland, yeah. So uh, you know, and it, it's, a lot of the announcers are Irish on the BBC. So I, I think it's become very very integrated today, and really, you know, it's like the same country, the UK and Ireland, in terms of back and forth and the number of flights and everything. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I've got a friend. He, he lives he lives in Ireland. He commutes to London. You know, or just like does a where goes over there for a few days, comes back. This kind of thing, you know. Right. It's uh, hmm. and and also the success. I mean, you got like Ryanair, huge, huge, uh, huge European company, um, and a lot of a lot of very wealthy people in Ireland today uh, who are making a difference, and um, you know, healing healing old wounds. I would say. I remember the first time I ever heard the term car bomb uh, that had to do with uh, with Northern Ireland. Sure. Uh, long before sure. we were hearing about, you know, all this other craziness going on uh, yeah. in, in the Middle yeah. East. That, that's been going on since literally time began. Yeah. Well, the market's still slipping away, so it really doesn't look very good for the rest of the day here. Um, well, our next zone below. Oh, we just hit the zone below. Okay, now I talked about this last night in the workshop, guys. I said if we were way, <coughs> when we talked about this on the sh in the workshop last night, we were, where the heck were we? Uh, we were we were here. Now we've already gone to here, and I said if if by chance there's some way that we get below that sixty sixty one during the Friday session. I said, that opens the door to our lowest weekly trading zone. And John, that's all the way down at 29, 22 slash 23. Yeah. So I, I said in the workshop, if, if that happens, so if this candle closes below that zone, guys, uh, those of you that are members of the Logical Swing Trader, uh, be, on, be on alert because there will be an alert. And I'll just yeah. tell you now, this is going to be the final target. Don't know that we'll get to the final target. But the logical swing trader is not your father's swing trade. We'll be looking to uh, take profit as the market makes money available. Okay, so. All right, John, what next? Did you, uh, by the way, did you ever get over to the Bullman Bar over in Kinsale? I. It's a little, it was a little bit out of town. Anyway, there was a picture, yeah. I never forget this, you know, the, uh, there was a picture of Prince Charles <clears throat> sitting around with a bunch of locals. I mean, it was just like unheard of. It well, was... I don't remember the name of the pub that we were in there, but the mayor was there and he sat wow. and, and he, we, we, we had a few, uh, what do they call them? Is it ale Guinnesses. or what? Guinnesses. Guinness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we had some Guinnesses <laughs> with the mayor and he was really a nice guy uh, my wife would probably remember his name and then we even went back the next morning and he met us there again the next morning and we had like a breakfast uh, and some more guinness and uh then we then we flew back that's, home that's, what, that's life in Kinsale. <laughs> yeah 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 it was it was just so nice uh, so everybody was so friendly accommodating uh and they didn't hate us just because we were americans in amsterdam it was a completely different story this is back during the hanging chad days when we were in amsterdam and we were in the elevator and i said something to my wife or she said something to me and everybody in the elevator turned and looked at us because they detected the american accent and right outside of the hotel the streets were thronged with people yankee go home you know death to america i mean it was we stayed in our room for a couple of days i mean i would dash out to get some food but yeah, it, it was rough, but in Ireland they they just you know it was like we were family. Yeah, listen, if you haven't been there, you you, you have to. It's a must must do. You know. My wife just place. found this package, yeah. uh, and I think she may have booked it for us uh, sometime next spring. Uh, round trip airfare, airfare, round trip from Phoenix to Ireland and back, four hundred bucks. 
that's, that's pretty good. That's, 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 that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's cheaper than a cruise. <clears throat> the last trip uh, we took uh, back in 04 to Ireland, the package we had, we got off the airplane and somebody met us there uh, at the airport. They took us to our rental car and then they handed us this big thick book filled with uh, bed and breakfasts. So we just yeah. got in our car, took off across Ireland, and every day as the sun would start to set, whatever town we happened to be in, I'd get out that little book, I'd find the bed and breakfasts in that town, we'd make a couple phone calls, hi, we're part of this you know, tour company, uh, do you have a room tonight? Or do you have a bed? Oh yeah, come on over. So we'd go to their house and it's like invite, uh, it's, you can uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain, no, res no reservations. That's that's the way to do Ireland. It know, was such a of, such a such a great trip because it was yeah. leisurely at our own pace. If we wanted to stop at some old church ruins and hang out for a while, you know, there was no pressure. And then it, and and not once did we were we unable to find a room. Uh, because I, I kept asking the tour people, I go like, shouldn't we reserve? No, 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 no. Whatever town you happen to be in, just call. You'll find a room. Don't worry. And we did yeah. every time. And the yeah. breakfasts, that soda bread that they would serve, that was one of the heartiest breakfasts I ever had. Uh, really De good. Denny's Irish, Denny's Irish sausages. <laughs> best, <laughs> best in the world. <clears throat> good stuff. So, good times. Great. Well, listen, thanks very much for the invite. Hey, Sorry thank you, John. Uh, that's a terrible thank you. thing. But thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next week. Thanks okay. very much. Bye -bye. All right. Have a good weekend. All right, guys. <laughs> Let us... I'm going to bring up the concierge trade alerts again so that you can uh, grab a screenshot if you would uh, like to. Here we go. Now, concierge... We have two types of alerts. The concierge, Logic 247. Concierge is based on prior price behavior. Logic 247 is based on current price behavior. The concierge is a static report. This is it. You're looking at it. Comes out every night. I shoot for between the Globex open at 6 p.m. Eastern and 9 p.m. Eastern. The last night I got it out 8.20 p.m. Eastern. When the numbers come in, this is what I teach my traders to do go to the charts of whatever markets you trade. We cover the same eight markets every night. Put two lines on your chart. Example, let me show you on the S&P. Pull that down, S&P. Okay, ignore all the other lines. So what our traders are taught to do when the alerts come out last night, you go to, here I'll use a rectangle. Go to your chart, put two lines on your chart. First line would be at 29.84. So it's gonna be about right there. Okay. And then put a second line on your chart for the alert, 29.75. That's that 29.75, if I'm not mistaken, that's been the same short trigger three nights in a row. Hang on, let's look. 29.75. That was the last night. Night before was 29.75. No, the night before was uh was 66. Okay. So two nights in a row, 29.75. That's just indicative of a market that's kind of been going sideways. Uh, can't get out of its own way until it does. All right, so now we're gonna put a little rectangle down at 29.75. Okay, so long side, short side. Last night you would have been putting those lines like so, okay. Now I said they came out at 820, so that's gonna, eight, 820 Eastern, so that's gonna be 2020. So let me find the 20 hundred candle. Twenty hundred candle is this one right here. So let me move this rectangle over here. So last night, following those instructions, you got two lines on your chart. I'm just using the rectangle so it doesn't confuse everything else. So the first thing to trigger was the short side. <clears throat> we've had a lot of two-sided action this week, even though we've been doing a lot of sideways 
uh, movement, we dropped to 2971.50. So that's three and a half points. Let's see, 75 uh, down to 71.50. Yeah, so three and a half point move. Price then gets back above the BBC. It gets above the weekly trading zone. We hit the trigger and uh, from 75, looks like we only go up, let's just see, 86. So, I'm sorry, 84. The, the line's at 84 and we put in a swing high initially at 86. So, below gave us three points, above gave us two points. Now, let's get rid of that. Okay. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. So price gets back below the trigger. It triggers a second time. Now look at the second trigger compared to the first trigger. <clears throat> Here we had a big bullish candle that just kind of dead ended, if you will. <clears throat> at the trigger whereas this one powered through the trigger okay and so from the entry at 29.84 takes us up to a high of 93 so that's a nine point move in the s p 500 e-mini futures now it's difficult of course to get out of the swing high or swing low because you don't know it's going to be the swing high or swing low until after the fact. But before we got there, I had highlighted for the traders in the workshop that this would most likely be a place that we would find good resistance, that it would be an obstacle in the path of price getting to this zone. Why? That's right there. Okay. So we know ahead of time as we're moving up that this area has a high probability of being good resistance till it isn't. In this case, it never wasn't. It held as the good resistance, which sent price back below the BBC, down to the zone where we expect to find good support, sent the market up to where we anticipate finding good resistance. BBC sends us back down to where we expect to find good support, except this time we didn't find the good support. We ripped right through it like it wasn't even there. What do we expect to happen? Well, when we slice, when that initial move runs out of steam, we expect price to retrace to the zone that was sliced through because if it failed to be good support, we need to know if it can serve as good resistance. In this case, there was so much bearish momentum, we couldn't pull all the way back. Swing high on the pullback was 77 and a quarter. So we were off by four, three, by seven ticks. Okay, seven ticks from pulling all the way to the zone. So we're confirmed as good resistance the next high probability move is the zone below. Price is always trying to get to a zone. We just have to be careful here and here because those are places where the market may find good support. We're now consolidating at this zone, 60 slash 61. Let me scrunch this up for a minute. Back here on Monday, let me back up to Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, where are you? Uh, where? Oh, right here. The arrow's covering it up. That arrow is pointing at the Sunday night Globex open. We gapped higher on the open. Took us up to the zone overhead at 0708, where we found good resistance. Price was rejected there. 
Only three things happen at a weekly trading zone. Most likely is consolidation. Second most likely, rejection. And the final least likely, the slice, which as you can see, the slice real well here. We sliced through this zone like it wasn't even there. When the move ran out of steam, we came back and confirmed good resistance. It failed to be good support. Okay, will you be good resistance? Yes, you will. So we went from zone to zone, back up to the zone, back down to the zone, back up to the zone. Now, this isn't anything new. This isn't unusual. This isn't an anomaly. This isn't a one-off. Prices have been doing this. I, I have evidence. I have proof. I can take this into a court of law and make my case that price has been doing this since December 14th, 2009. It's been doing it since the inception of the markets. I can show you that on historical charts. But when I say I have proof, I have evidence, that's how long we've been publishing the zones. I have, in fact, I posted a picture the other day of, uh, let me show you. Let me show you what it looks like. Diary of a Madman. I think that's what somebody called it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Scroll up. Scroll. If you don't hang out in the Breeze channel, that's where our traders go to just shoot the breeze. We have a channel for talking about the markets. We have the alert channels. We've we got a channel for everything. We also have one called the CFRN Breeze. That's where we go to just shoot the breeze about non-market related things. It's open to the public. You don't have to be a passport holder. Don't have to be a partner. If you love Jesus, well, you're welcome to come and spend time. Oh, this is kind of funny. Uh, I thought it was. Okay, let's see if you can identify this as I'm looking for the other thing. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. There it is. Aha. Okay, now let me put the mic, let me adjust the microphone. Now here's what I said in the channel. Can you guess what this is. Listen up. Sure, you figured it out. Every night in my front yard, needless to say, we're going to have a neighborhood full of kittens here. Uh, we got a couple of homeless cats, they live in the sewer. But, um, yeah, every night I got to go out there and shoo them every night uh, so myself and the neighbors uh, can get some sleep. But that wasn't the thing I was looking for. The thing I was looking for. Got to be coming up pretty soon. Ah, here we go. It's turned sideways. I took the picture wrong. Pick a week, any week in the last decade, and I'll show you that week's weekly trading zones. Well, if you turn your head sideways, <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> there, diary of a madman. So, Every Monday morning, when you see those pretty little zones show up in your inbox or in the Telegram channel, this is what it looks like before <laughs> before I tidy it all up and uh, carve it into stone. Okay, back to the zones. So, everything that we spoke about last night in the workshop and on the show yesterday, everything that we said, okay, now this is the next high probability move. It all, it all came to pass. It's not because we have any kind of magical superpowers. 
it's called the high probability thing because that's the most likely thing to happen. The only way you can know what the next high probability thing is, is just experience, you know, time in the markets or having someone uh, teach you a methodology and a strategy complete with indicators color coded for your convenience that shaves about, you know, five or six years off the learning curve right there. Uh, you can know. We've got a trial starting up this coming week. If you participate in the trial, by participate, what do I mean? You show up. That's number one. You know, sometimes in life, 99% of the equation is just showing up. So if you take the trial, you got to show up. You're not going to learn this by osmosis. When my wife and I started our ministry down in Mexico, uh, Mission La Gracia, she's pretty good with Spanish. I mean, she's, I would say she's fully conversational, but she, she could get us by, whether we're in a restaurant or a host, whatever, or, or a realtor's office, she knows enough to get us by. I, because we were building this mission and I knew I'd be going there, you know, at least every other weekend for quite some time, Instead of taking a Spanish course, I just figured I would learn it by osmosis. You know, well, once you're exposed to it long enough, then, you know, it'll just become second nature. You, you just one day you'll wake up speaking Spanish. Yeah, that didn't happen. Not for me. No osmosis. Maybe I just have thick skin. I don't know. But my Spanish uh, is as poor today as it was uh, 19 years ago when I first had that fantasy about learning it through osmosis. Uh, so you sign up for the trial, but then you have to participate in the trial. Participation means showing up, means putting the indicators on your chart. It means asking lots of questions. It means stumbling around in the simulator with live real-time data, trying to put on and take off trades based upon your rudimentary understanding of our methodology, strategy, and indicators. The good thing is, is every time you're trying to do something, I'm like two mouse clicks away. You click on Telegram, you click on my name, I'm either at my computer or my phone is within arm's reach 24-7. I know it's just like, okay, what's he on? Well, I get my rest. I do. I'm blessed in that I can nap. I can hit REM in about five minutes. Standing up on a train, holding onto the strap, sleep like a baby. Back of a bus, sleep like a baby. I had to be careful when driving. <laughs> because I could nod out then too, but I have to roll the window down and get some fresh air. So I take, just as I publish alerts when opportunity presents, I rest when opportunity presents. So I need your participation. If, if you're going to learn how to trade, you're going to have to put forth some effort. You're not just going to wake up one day and, and be a trader. And nobody is ever going to hand you any kind of indicators, oscillators, whatnot, that's going to make you a trader. Nothing can make you a trader except you. And the way you make yourself a trader is if you take our trial, you show up to the room every day. When alerts come through on Logic 247, whether you trade it in SIM or not, and you should trade it in SIM, SIM only, till you become consistently profitable, even if you don't trade it, you should take each alert, go to your chart, and see if it jumps out at you based on, you know, let's say you sign up for the trial on Sunday. Well, by the time Tuesday rolls around, when an alert comes out, you should be able to look at your chart and see why it's an alert. Oh, oh, that's what he meant when he said that. And it, it just, the more you apply yourself, the more you participate in the experience, the more beneficial it's going to be. And at the end of the week, even if you decide it's not your cup of tea, that's okay. 
you're going to take away from this experience things that will change the way you look at markets forever. The week you spend with us, if you participate, is going to have a lifelong, lasting impact on your journey to become a professional trader, someone who trades for a living, whatever it is that your goal, because see, I'm going to impart things to you that you've not heard before. I'm going to show you things you've not seen before. Old saying, you can't unring a bell, you can't put toothpaste back in a tube, all of that. Whether you become a partner or passport holder, you're going to take away from this week-long experience things that will help you and benefit you in whatever way you attempt to trade the markets for the rest of your life. I guarantee it. It is a game changer. Not bragging, not boasting. But you know, it says in the good book, <clears throat> you build a city up on a hill so people can see the light. You, you don't put your light under a basket, right? So if we have something which I believe to be of great value, then it would be wrong of us to, to hoard it and hide it and you know, not share it with our fellow believers because we're all on the same team. We're all building the same kingdom, God's kingdom. We're in this together, right? So the, the invitation's there. All you have to do is accept it, participate. Part of the participation means asking lots of questions. I think sometimes people hesitate asking questions because they don't want to appear stupid. Oh, well, any fool knows that. No, 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 no. We don't think like that. We don't judge people. We're, we're, we're there to help. Now, I bring this up occasionally, but let me just bring it up again. Clear the air. Every time you see somebody offering some kind of course, some kind of strategy, some indicator set, some way to you know, navigate the markets and, and earn a living. The first thought that comes to your mind, and hey, it comes to my mind too when I see it. If you know so much, if you're so proficient at this, why are you wasting your time with a bunch of knuckleheads that won't listen to you, won't do what you ask them to do, and then when they fail miserably, blame it on you? Why do you even waste your time with that? That's a very valid question. I'll tell you why. I could, I could give you an answer that tickles your ears about how it's our calling and it's our ministry and, oh, you know, the market's just been so good to us. We, 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 we want to give back. You know what? A little bit of all that is true. It really is. But at the end of the day, I want to get paid. <gasps> Did he say he's in it for the money? I did. If you ask me tomorrow, I'll tell you the same thing. It's also what I said last week and last month. Any book that you ever read, written by, oh, let's say a Rockefeller or a Trump, you know, someone who has not only found a way to generate income, but generate wealth. You know, getting a paycheck and acquiring wealth, two different things. The paycheck stops, you know, two weeks after you stop showing up for work. Wealth passes from generation to generation until the third generation, they typically screw it up, but that, that's another story for a different day. Okay? All of those books that you read written by the uber wealthy, they all have a section devoted to multiple income streams. You don't put all your eggs in one basket. We never know what's going to happen next. Now, if you can create multiple income streams inside of a field of endeavor that you're accomplished at, you know, that you know something about, that's good. You should have a couple of income streams if you can outside of that field of endeavor. But if you know something and know it well, 
then play to your strength. So with trading, yes, trading provides a good living, okay? Teaching other people how to trade, if you have a legitimate methodology that you can actually teach to other people, that pays well too. That's a nice income stream. So Michael and I have been able to create inside of something that we're passionate about trading just right off the top. There's two good income streams, trading, teaching people how to do what we do. Okay. Have we taken that to uh, different degrees, different, uh, deeper levels? We have. Now, that concept can be applied to any, any industry, any field of endeavor. Uh, let's say you're a real estate salesman. Okay. Well, you make money selling real estate. At some point, you qualify for a broker's license, which means you can now hire real estate agents to work for you. So you can continue to make money selling real estate commissions, but you now can also make an override off of the salesman that you've hired, the realtors that you've hired to work for your firm. You not only make money from your own sales, you make money off of their sales. As you rat hole a little bit of that money up under the mattress, pretty soon you've saved up enough to go buy that little apartment complex you've had your eye on for a while. Now all of a sudden, you're a realtor, you're a broker, you just became a property manager. Those are three distinctly separate income streams all within the same field of endeavor, real estate. And I could go on. I mean, at some point you might apply for a mortgage broker license so that you can not only help your client find a nice house, you can also help them swing the loan that they need to buy the thing. And you get paid on both ends. Nothing illegal about that. It's actually quite clever. Don't you agree? Maybe you know how to fix cars. Maybe you're a great mechanic. I don't even have to say any more. Already your mind is going, oh yeah, yeah. And then I could turn it into that. And then, you know, pretty soon you got a car lot somewhere with 50 used cars on it that you fixed with your own hand. You don't even have to sell the cars. You can hire somebody to sell the cars on your lot. Pretty soon, you might not even have to turn the wrenches yourself because people paid you to teach them how to turn the wrench. You just walk around with your clipboard. You cover all, stay clean all day long. Whenever you see a mechanic with clean coveralls, he's either a horrible mechanic or a genius and you can fill in the blanks okay back to this again real quick last night in the workshop I showed everyone if price starts to drop if price gets serious about going lower we were waiting on this pullback so at this pullback the high probability thing was for price to hold here for the pullback to hold we had a BBC overhead that should be good resistance till it isn't Weekly trading zone overhead, that should be good resistance till it isn't. Well, guess what? It wasn't. Okay, but we were prepared for that. I had already put this in the channel. Let me, let me go find that channel. Uh, show you. I think I just showed you. I'll show you again. Where it be? Uh, hang on. All right, let me find it, find it, find it. Here we go. This is it? Yeah, this is it. Okay, I started out in the Telegram channel last night, I think even before uh, the workshop. And I put this chart up. I said, four hours of not much. And was that these? Yeah, that was these four candles right here. And Joe commented, I know, right? Not a bad day, though. Lots of volatility. Then I said, the concierge trade alerts are out. 
And then Joe said, made my goal for tomorrow on the CTAs. Thank God it's Friday, and it may trigger again soon. So the CTAs were out at it's 8.17 p.m. Eastern. And so by 10.54 Eastern, Joe had got his goal for the day. Then <clears throat> I posted this at 11 p.m. Eastern as discussed in tonight's workshop. Okay, what you're looking at here is this right here. We were waiting for this pullback. Price always reverts to the mean. We got the pullback and then we pulled right through it. Weekly trading zone powered right through that. As discussed in tonight's workshop, the pullback is upon us. If the BBC and the WTC hold the pullback and we begin to create another leg to the downside, keep in mind the obstacles price must overcome in order to get to the weekly trading zone below. The lines on the chart above represent the obstacles we discussed. If you've got any questions, post them here. As long as price remains below the BBC, price is trying to get to the zone below. But you see right here, that changed. We were waiting on the pullback. Wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. We're still waiting for it. And then I said, if price moves above the BBC and the WTZ, here are your obstacles between this zone and this zone. That's this zone and this zone. So at the time I posted it, here was obstacle, obstacle obstacle that's these lines you see right here now you see right here what happened when price got to that obstacle it pulled back when price got to that obstacle it pulled back and when price got to that obstacle the top one that's where it failed the feeling of accomplishment that you'll have when you learn not to tell the future because you'll never learn to do that but when you learn to look at a chart and know what the next high probability move is and when you know what the obstacles are to prevent that could potentially prevent the market from accomplishing its current goal and the current goal is always trying to get to the zone overhead or the zone below. Okay. So here are your obstacles between 79, 80 and 97, 98. Okay. This is how it played out. Amon, always very kind. You're such a gentleman. Thank you. Still, see, we're still waiting on that pullback. If this pullback holds, we know what we're going to do, and we know where the obstacles are. If the pullback fails, and it did, you can see it right here. We know what we're going to do. We know where the obstacles are. See, you can know this too. You can't know the future, but you can know. I'm telling you, you can know with great certainty what the next high probability move is. Now, that's not always what happens, but it certainly happens enough for the time that we're able to call it the next high probability move. Ah, made go for tomorrow, awesome job. No trading for me, I'm at work. Might need to set up another. Okay, keep moving. Oh, that article I read on the show the other day, uh, if any of you missed it, it's in the Telegram channel, uh, the one about why day traders fail, okay? And in that article, every place, and Valerie uh, sliced out just the audio part portion of that. So uh, wherever it says Bitcoin in this article, 
day trading Bitcoin when 95% of traders lose money and fail. Whatever you trade, stocks, futures, options, just wherever it says Bitcoin, you insert whatever you trade and, and that will apply. Okay, moving on. If you look at the last chart I posted, you'll see how those obstacles I outlined to the upside all had an impact on price. And that's just exactly what we've been talking about so far today. Okay, this morning, daily double is out. Uh, Tim asked, ES price bouncing between the CTAs, probably a sideways end for the week. That is what it looked like, Tim, up until we got that move between 1130 and noon Eastern. And I had just said that in the room. Hey, guys, if this market is going to do anything other than move sideways for the rest of the session, we might see an indication of it between 1130 and noon. 1130 is when we close the room. That doesn't move the markets. But it's also 1130 is when the London markets close. And as traders there are closing out positions and you know setting up positions for the Globex Open Sunday night, that plays into order flow. And remember, order flow is the only thing that can move the market. Uh, and then Bill gave us some news. Great timely call on the daily double. Thank you very much, Joe. You're very kind. He says he doubled his weekly profit on one trade. Way to go. Good job. I guess that's why they call it the daily double. Yeah. Okay. All right. So all this wholesome goodness can be yours too. You'll get to see what nice people we really are. And yes, We'll earn a paycheck at the end of the week for our efforts. That's what they call a win-win situation. That's the only time you'll hear me use that term, win. All right, real quick, let's fly through the Dow. Here we go. All right, there's the Dow. Zone to zone. Obstacle. Back down to the zone came a little short back down to the zone back up to the zone back down to the zone and now below the zone okay remember these weekly zones come out Monday morning 6 p.m. 6 15 a.m. Eastern we've been publishing them since December 14th of 2009 price has been behaving around the zones the same way day after day week after week what it really does is it creates a framework for our traders. Does price always turn perfectly at the zone like this? Or like this? Or like this? No. No. What typically happens is it will consolidate at a zone, make up its mind based on order flow, which zone is next on the agenda. Is it the one overhead? or the one below, okay? Framework. Think of a football gridiron. You're sitting at the 50 yard line. To the left, you got the 40, the 30, the end zone. To your right, 40, 30, end zone, okay? Think of, think of this framework in that manner. And, and, and Price is always trying to, I don't do a lot of sports analogies, so Price is always trying to make a first down. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. <coughs> but once you understand that price is trying to get to the zone overhead, you, at that point, you probably know more than 90% of money managers on Wall Street. They don't know, but you do. Now let me show you. And then I really got to fly through the rest of these. When price is below the BBC, we expect lower prices. How low can it go? Well, the trade to target, of course, is the weekly zone below. So we get below the BBC, we go to the zone below, we find good support, which sends us 
back up to the BBC, which when we approach it from below, we expect to be good resistance. And so what does that do? It sends us right back down to the zone where we again find good support, gets us back above the BBC. And what do we expect? Leg retrace, leg retrace, leg bank right up. That's good resistance as we anticipate. It sends us back to the BBC where we find good support, which sends us right back up to the zone where we find good resistance, which sends us back below the BBC. And when that happens, we then chart a course to the zone below. Last night, concierge trade alerts for the Dow. I got them right here. Okay. So for the Dow, <clears throat> consider being long at or above 26925. That's a good bingo. And on the short side, 26850. All right. So I'm just going to put the line real quick. I'm even going to try my little rectangle. I've been meaning to start doing that. I think it's more efficient. <clears throat> so 26925. Basically, that's there. Okay. And the short side, 26850. 26850. That's going to be right. In. Oh, grabbed the wrong tool. All right. I'll just stick with it. 26850. So from 268, 26850, all I was looking for was a 20 point move down to the zone. The market was kind. It gave us more than that. All right. But if all it had given us was from 830, I'm sorry, 850 down to 830, 20 points, $5 per point, $100 per contract traded. If you've earned the right to trade 10 contracts, and with us, you got to earn the right. Once you've earned the right to trade 10, then that's a $1,000 move. So, I mean, think about this. Once you've earned the right to trade 10 contracts, if that's your goal, I mean, some people are perfectly content to trade three or five or, you know, whatever works for you. But... If you have a goal of someday earning the right to trade 10, okay, that move right there, not the whole move, just from the trigger to where we expect good support, it's $100 per contract traded. So with 10, that means 1000 That's five grand a week. If you take off two weeks for vacation, it's still a quarter million dollars a year gross. Now, I'm not on this radio program trying to convince you I can teach you how to make a quarter million dollars a year. It would be wrong of me to phrase it that way, okay? Not only do I have to stay within the letter of the law, I also have to be able to sleep at night, okay? I can't have my conscience continually waking me up all night going, dude, I can't believe you said that. No, no, no. I, it's not worth it. It's just... It, how, yeah, a lot of times you ask some crooked guy, man, how do you sleep? The answer is usually on my side. How about you? So I know some of you are discouraged at this point because you've tried everything. And that's part of the problem. You just keep trying everything you come across. You don't give any of it a large enough sample size to see if it actually could be a profitable strategy. You're discouraged, possibly even depressed, angry. You snap at the wife, snap at the kids, kick the dog. Stop. Don't, you don't have to do it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't. Now, if things are not going the way you would like them to go, if you continue to do what you're currently doing, pretty sure things are going to continue to go the same way they're going. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to say, you know, you need to keep switching it up till you find something that works. Uh-uh. 
find something that's based on truth, not parlor tricks. Find some, if it's not us, find something that's based upon how the market works, the principle upon which the market works. And then stay with that long enough that you not only learn how to apply it and trade it, but you have a large enough sample size to actually render a judgment if it's a positive thing or not. If you want to talk, if you're not comfortable asking questions in these group environments like this, I mean, when you type into the chat box, nobody sees what you type, but myself, Michael, Valerie, Bert, if he's here, and none of us are here to judge you. We're here to help if we can. Because helping you makes us feel good. And it creates a paycheck. I'm never going to back off that. Some people go, well, you know, you probably shouldn't say that. Why? At least, at least they know I'm telling them the truth. I'm not trying to blow smoke up their chimney. I'm not saying I've never done anything nice for somebody that I didn't get paid for. In fact, that's one of the, that puts one of the biggest smiles on God's face I've ever seen. When you do something for somebody who can never repay your kindness and you don't tell a soul about it, it's just between you and God. Tell you what, you pack your day full of a few little experiences like that, pack your week full of a, you'd be walking on air. It's, oh, it's like you're just going to explode. You're just going to burst. It. Right, right. And that's exactly what will happen. Most people, it will, you know, it may take a couple cocktails, a couple adult beverages, but pretty soon you'll be telling everybody about how good you are, how holy you are, how you're helping all these people, you, how you and God are co-workers laboring in the field together if I could if I could encourage resist just keep your mouth shut I found so much power in just keeping my mouth shut and you know how hard that is for me because I talk for a living right hey I any of you guys sleepwalk I know that's kind of dancing down a rabbit trail my dad used to sleepwalk when I was a kid same every night he'd go to the kitchen make a peanut butter sandwich leave the peanut butter open leave the bread open create a horrible mess go back to bed i to my knowledge never been a sleepwalker I, I'm so transparent people say I probably shouldn't be so transparent I don't care what they say I woke up last night in my living room we have this rattan shelf thing. My arm was through one of the little side. When I woke up, I was standing there with this valuable, breakable ceramic something or other. I don't even know what it is. A, do, uh, a knick knack, I guess, or a doodad. I woke up standing there with my arm linked through this rattan deal, holding onto this object. I don't know how I got there. I don't know how long I'd been there. I don't know if this is like some symptom of some, you know, underlying psychotic, psychological problem. Um, do I need counseling? Or do I need, need to just go spend some time with Jesus and ask him what happened? I don't know, but it's kind of freaky. I hope it doesn't happen anymore. Now. We live in a two-story house. And the flight of stairs going down pretty steep. I guess I might need to put one of those little one of those little ropes up, one of those little velvet ropes up, so I don't go tumbling. I mean, I'm actually concerned. If you have any remedies or any suggestions or ideas, or or, or maybe I need to put a motion detector uh, right outside of my bedroom door, so if I go wandering out, it'll wake me up. That's just weird. Anyway, uh, back to this. Well, we got to get through here. All right. You've seen the Dow. That went real well. Here's the Russell. Russell, considering short, 1524. Hey, John. Welcome back. 
<laughs> okay, I'm not buttoning in, but uh, no, no, I, uh, I'm really uh, wor worried about this market right now. Uh, okay, think, are, are you looking at any chart in particular, John? Yeah, I'm looking at the weekly, the monthly, the overhead. I mean, look, honestly, what's bothering me is that uh, we're putting in what often turns out to be a long-term kind of a, uh, you know, pr a precursor to a, to a protracted downtrend. And as I said earlier on today, the sort of death of a thousand cuts, the cuts are getting uh, sharper, if you like, and uh, deeper. And uh, I think the, uh, the, the, you know, I'm noticing that the, uh, the number of advances, uh, new highs is, is oh, yeah. uh, dropping. What is that number? <clears throat> it's, and the number of new lows is increasing. Um, you know, Uber, I just noticed that Uber just went to a new low. Some of these IPOs, you know, these, these are valuable companies where, you know, people were long at 50, 60, 70 dollars, losing a lot of money on these these issues. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just now getting so, up a but, weekly chart yeah, on yeah. the S&P, John. I mean, oh, the, yeah, this we're is coming. A, yeah, we're, I got to get out of that, that, toppy, that, that sort of double toppy format. You know what? Uh, I mean, look, I can't immediate recall 1973, but it kind of looks a little bit like 1973 here. There was a kind of a, a high and then a retest and a failed retest and then it then it uh, it went down a lot. So if we take out twenty nine, if we take out yeah. twenty nine, I mean, if, if we gap down on Sunday night oh, going into Monday, exactly, I think it would be very uh, devastating. You know, and um, would be you know with that that last uptrend line <clears throat> for the I'll last bring it back. Hang on. eight nine months uh, is. Um, is uh, going to get broken here uh, probably uh, early next week. So, um, you know, that's kind of a steep uptrend line. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure if Garrett was on today, he'd probably be saying the same thing. You can even see it. You see the way that that's that's a weekly run right now, right? Yeah, it's weekly, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you see what I mean about this weekly, you know, this pressure here that's pushing the weekly down. It, 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 it just looks bad, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it does. Uh, I'm going to get a swing <clears throat> trade alert here in just a few minutes, and 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 gapping down through that that uh, the, that double line there you've got, um, that is a uh, a real problem for the market. I agree. So, and uh, it's it's it may not be the uh, you know the um, uh, reliable you know. Every single dip we've seen recently has been, you know, we've had uh, a rebound, but this time the rebounds might might not be might not be there. You know, I just our think, uh, Russell swing trade guys just triggered, I believe, so I'll be getting a stop loss out on that yeah. for you here in just a minute. Yeah, and listen, the Chinese stocks are continuing lower. The over the uh, international, you know, the overseas, the emerging markets, they're all going lower. And remember, where they're maxing out on all the all the um, uh, stimulus right now, so it's not working, and that's uh, that's an added problem. So, uh, might, I haven't looked at India for a while. Maybe even India is pulling back uh, a little bit. Guys, yeah, that was our short on the uh, our short alert on the NQ last night it was seventy seven sixty five, <coughs> and we're almost to well, we've put in a low at. 76.72. That's almost a two thousand dollar per contract move so far. Yeah. <clears throat> so the um, the, uh, the there is a real risk here of this thing unraveling right now. Gotcha. Especially got you know and look this is the second last day of the month and it's you know there's no window dressing today <clears throat> at least yet and um, right. If we do close down uh, around these levels, uh, it, 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 I think the the impact of what's happening. Remember, it's middle of the night over in China right now, so exactly the, uh, they haven't know, had a chance China, to react to this. Exactly, Monday, Monday, Sunday night, Sunday Monday night. morning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, just thought I'd well, thank you, John. Chime in. I appreciate you popping yeah. back in with that. All right, have Thanks a, have very a great much. weekend. All okay, you too. Okay, guys, going to move quick here. Uh, I'm going to give you a formula for successful living. First Peter 5, 6, and 7. 
Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God. Somebody quipped, the trouble with success is that the formula is the same as the one for a nervous breakdown. The Bible gives us the real formula for successful living. It encompasses three areas, authority, attitude, and assurance. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 7, accept the authority of the elders, humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Now, let's look at each of these three areas. The authority, the attitude, and the assurance. Number one, submit yourself to those who are wise, listen to their counsel, become accountable, accept reproof, take suggestions, respect experience, and follow a worthy example. Only when you can take advice will you be qualified to give it. Only when you respect and submit to leadership will you be qualified to lead others. Number two, humble yourself. In scripture, the hand of God symbolizes two things, his discipline and his deliverance. When you humble yourself before him, you're accepting his discipline as being for your good you're also acknowledging his willingness to answer your cry for help and deliver you by whatever means he chooses. Number three, throw yourself on God's mercy and care. Trouble and disappointment will surely come, and when they do, you need to throw yourself on the Lord. The situation may be too big for you, but it's never too big for him. Does that mean there's no place for planning and goal setting and hard work? No, it just means that you're willing to do things God's way, which I think we both know is always the best way. It is the weekend, CFR and Charter dictates you must spend quality time with your family. Of course, I'll see you in church on Sunday and everyone here in the Valley of the Sun is invited to join me, Praise City Church. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Have a good weekend. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading E-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.